So welcome to episode 87 of Everything Business Consulting. I'm here with Jason Owens, who's our National Manager of Consultix across the U.S., of A. Now Jason's been talking to a wide variety of different coaches, consultants and advisors over the last six months to find out what they need to improve. And one thing that he's found is that they often niche down and try and specialize in particular areas and that actually costs them clients. And it costs them a lot of time and money to try and replace those potential leads and prospects that they could have picked up. So, Jason, can you tell us what you think they're doing wrong? Yeah, I, I just think that you, you, you pretty much hit that on the head right there, Julius, in the fact that, you know, we all know as consultants and advisors that um, finding prospects is is a full-time job, right? So why would we want to limit ourselves to the number of potential prospects right off the bat by pigeon toeing ourselves down into a specific category. You know, um, I have found in, and I'm sure you have as well as being a, um, a consultant or, or, you know, you being an advisor to businesses there in New Zealand, many times a business owner may think that they need a specific consultant for a specific problem, such as a a marketing consultant. They're like, oh man, I really, I really don't like doing our, our social media. We really are bad at it. I think we need a social media uh, consultant. When in actuality, they may need a branding consultant. But in their mind, because they're so sure that they need a specific category, they go to Google, they do a search. And if you're not marketing yourself as that specific category, you never even had a chance to talk to that business owner or even be on the list of, of potential uh, solutions to that business owner. Therefore, I always recommend to everybody that I've talked to, even you know whether they're in our Consultex network or not, is just stay super broad because it's, it's very rare that a business owner knows exactly what they need a consultant for. One thing that immediately pops to mind when we talk about this, Jason, is the average business that thinks they, they can make more money by selling more. So they might invest more into sales or marketing, but it's the rest of the operations behind their business that actually needs to be made more efficient and more profitable uh, to actually make that business more money. Just because they start to turn over more, they actually end up having more complications going on and, uh, and that sucks up any additional profit that comes from the greater sales. But that's not actually where they need to be focusing their time and effort to improve this business. And like you say, if you came in as a as a sales or a marketing consultant, you're not going to be able to see or fix those problems at the back end. So I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. I, I think we need to go in with a, a very open mind as a more generalist consultant and look at the entire process, the entire system of the business and see where the bottlenecks are. I'm a very big fan of yeah. Eli Goldratt's book, called the goal and that effectively turns your entire business into a production line from the moment that you are, you get a lead in the front door through to selling that customer then providing them a, a good or a service and the process around that and then seeing them out the back door and at any one of those points there could be an issue but if you're focused in on any of those links of the chain and don't have that broad point of view then how do you know you're producing or, or offering the right consulting service yeah and, and I think that, you know, I'm sure, you know, in your years of consulting and as well as in my years of consulting, the amount of times that I went in there <clears throat> and the real root cause of their, of their struggles and inefficiencies was typically never what <laughs> the business owner thought they needed help with, right? Yep. So they, they always are like, oh man, we need more sales. We need more sales. Well, in actuality, your customer service sucks and you literally are, are losing customers and, um, and, and they're not, you know, they need sales because their, their customer service is terrible. So the customer retention is terrible. So it, it's, it's absolutely, um, you know, in my experience, it's never what a business owner thinks because a lot of them are, are very uh, bullish on their business to begin with, right? They all think that their business is the best since, uh, sliced bread and they don't really want to be objective on 
on viewing their business, you know, from an outsider looking down on their business. They don't really want to do that. They just see, you know, one specific problem. I mean, typically it always ends up that there's not enough money in the in the bank at the end of the month. But but what is the root cause of that, right? And and that's where I think Consultex is. That's where we excel in Consultex is because our client acquisition process. Um, which we'll get into probably in another podcast here shortly, I think, is that, you know, we show them not only where they're losing money, but how much money they're losing and how that relates to why they should be hiring us. Um, I had a great client the other day and she was very, very sure that she wanted to be a, an employee morale uh, coach. And, and I, I was talking to her and I said, I said, I just don't understand what your pitch is to a business owner um, because, frankly, a lot of business owners that I know, if you tell them that their employees need morale boosting, um, the business owner will more than likely say, I'll give them a boost right in the butt out the door. Like They're not going to be really <laughs> looking to bring a, a consultant on to help you know that morale thing. Um, and I said to her, I said, you know, honestly, I said, if you look at it on a broad scope, let's find really what's going on in the business. And that employee morale coaching aspect is just an additional service down the road that once you're in there working on that business, that now becomes a very easy sell or an easy upsell for an additional service to that business owner. But I feel like that's a very, very difficult initial sell mm -hmm in how you're going to start your relationship with that business owner. So I think it's a two-way street. I, I really think that a lot of business owners are looking for the wrong type of consultant. But on the flip side of that, I think a lot of consultants and advisors are offering a very specific niche and limiting their um, possibilities of, of prospects and who they can even um, pitch and try to win as clients. Yeah, I, I agree, Jason. I think trying to marry up the two, a niche service that uh, the business owner doesn't perceive that they need versus the service they perceive they need, getting them to marry up uh, can be a very difficult task. Now, there's something else you said before as well that, uh, that resonated with what I've seen out there, and that is that the business owners normally they see these symptoms inside their business and what you described was not having enough money in the bank account at the end of the month. Now, that's a symptom of something else or a multiple other things within the business that are going wrong. And it could be that the symptom is not having enough money. It might be that the symptom is uh, customers becoming very disgruntled and having apparently poor customer service. But if you ask why, 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 I'm a big fan of the five whys to find out what that root causes, then you can solve it. But if you're going in trying to, uh, with a hammer, trying to hit a nail on the first thing that you think, you're not going to actually find out that underlying cause. And I think that's where a lot of coaches and consultants that are niched really fail because they don't they, they look at the symptom and they try and apply a bit of medicine to that symptom but they don't go any deeper than that yeah i mean it's it's the uh you know i always say all the time like i especially when they turn um, a consultant or advisor tries to tell me like they're a marketing agency or, or they're a branding agency and i said well that's all well and good i said but every time that that's that business owner thinks that he needs a, a professional in sales and he goes and he Googles, I need a sales consultant, they never show up. Like you're not even putting your you're not even putting your line in the water, right? Like you don't even have a potential of of winning this guy as a client. And in reality, you know, it's very possible that the branding and the marketing is the cause of why they're not having enough sales, which is why that money is not in the bank at the end of the month. So like there, I think that it really comes back to you need to stay broad. You need to really meet, have a couple meetings, which is what we do here in Consultex. You know, like we have our discovery meeting. We have our diagnostic meeting. Organically, the root cause typically is going to come out either in conversation or in plain black and white numbers 
at the end of our diagnostic meeting when our profit leakage calculator spits out about what they're losing in each category, right? And, you know, again, I go back to experience. I've seen business owners flabbergasted, and fl frankly, they didn't believe me when I would show them that profit leakage calculator that that a specific category was the cause or where they were where they had the most inefficiencies and probably was that bottleneck that we were talking about. Um, they, they, a lot of times they just don't believe it. They, they don't want to think that that's it because it's more than likely, it's probably the, in the one specific area of their business that they feel that they're doing the best, right? I think there's something very powerful, Jason, when the business owner actually starts to share those symptoms with you as a consultant and you don't get them to share these broad challenges or these symptoms generally if you're talking about a specific thing if you're walking in there talking about marketing they're probably not going to tell you that they're having cash flow issues or that they've got a customer service problem you you need to be more broad to find that out so that's where i think our methodology and there's uh, some previous podcasts on this i'll put it in the show notes where if you walk in there and you're just asking them on a, on a more general basis how their business is going, what challenges are they having, what do they think they're doing well, you know, what's different, what's not going to plan, and, and I think something really important is what keeps them up at night, what are they thinking about, then those symptoms start to appear. And then like you say, once we start to do some more investigation, perhaps it's uh, just through conversation, perhaps it's through looking around the business, or it's through that diagnostic profit leakage calculator tool that we have as a part of our Consultex suite, which we'll go into a little bit more detail on to, uh, about that on the next podcast. But through any of that investigation, you can really find out those underlying causes. And once you know that, once you know what their pain point is, the challenges that they want to be solved, and you've got an idea of what we could present in a, in a manner that would fix those, not only the symptoms, but actually fix and improve the business to improve the value of it and the profitability and the efficiency, all of that kind of stuff, make it a better business for the owner to own that is when you're going to have a high conversion rate and you're actually going to be able to transform businesses rather than putting a sticking plaster, a band-aid on top of some sort of uh, other issue that, that doesn't really need to be fixed or there's other things attached to it that need to be solved. Yeah, I kind of breezed over it earlier when I was talking about you know client retention versus sales. You know, Someone, business owners, think they need a sales consultant and in reality... Um, you have no idea how many businesses I've worked in that they would lose their, they were losing customers out the back door faster than their sales team could bring them in. So they felt like their sales weren't there. But in reality, when I showed them that if they would keep 80% of the businesses and the customers that they got last month and add to what the salespeople were doing, it wasn't the salespeople problem. It was the customer service problem. Um, and, and it was that, that customer service that was, Ticking off the customers, them leaving or not, you know, continuing to use them as their as the service. So I think that you know that's exactly the biggest problem with the the consulting part of it is if you go after a specific, I'm only going to work on people's HR, like you said, then that's all they're trying to fix is the HR. I think that there's so many times where the real problem is just something different. I mean, we don't need to repeat it a million different ways, but I think that what we're trying to say here for all consultants and coaches and advisors out there that are um, considering or, or listening to this, but also the people that are considering becoming one of those three um, is, is really speak true to yourself in, in where do you want your business and your, your agency or firm to be and what you want it to do. Um, I've always loved, I know you know this, but I've always loved the, fir the term uh, fractional CEO because I truly believe that's, that's a lot of what uh, Consultex is. We help business owners in all areas of their business um, without actually getting stuck down in the weeds um, of a specific area. And we can prove and, and Im improve their businesses in way more categories and financially significantly better than any one niche classified consultant can. And that is why our, our customers stay with Consultex Advisors on average three to five years, right? That's why we keep them is because 
we're not just there for six months working on a project and then back out on the pavement trying to find new clients. We are literally building a partnership with these people and always moving that bottleneck to the next thing. So um, there's just, I you know, I don't say everybody needs Consultex. I've always said, you know, I, I'm not here to only tell you, tell you there's only one way. But in reality, the way that we do it, it just fits where you're opening the amount of fish in the sea to actually work with, you know, 10 times versus if you're just going to go after them as a specific category of, of a consultant. I was actually talking to one of our consultants uh, here in New Zealand uh, the other day, and he said, and he's a, an accountant, and he's very experienced in giving both financial and strategic advice to businesses. But what he said is that what he loves about general consulting, business consulting, is that it's just so varied. He gets to have that strategic input and that financial input, but then he gets to really understand and be a part of these businesses on so many different levels and across so many different things. And that means different things to different clients. Like one of his clients, he's more involved with the finance, and then another client, he's more involved with actually dealing with the people in the business. It just really depends on those problems, those challenges that you're in there to help solve. And he said to me, he said, you know, I don't have a massive number of clients, but I know the clients that I do have, they are so loyal to me because I'm actually in there solving their problems and they'll never get rid of me. And I think the record for the network now is, uh, is about 11 years for the longest standing client. And that's just because you're not in there to solve that one thing. It's not a quick project in and out. It's you're there to help them solve whatever the challenges of the month and grow in whatever direction is required in that business for this period of time. Yeah, I mean, and after that point, after, you know, after 10 years of being with one specific business, I mean, shoot, they they must believe that you're you're actually a, a financial owner of that business, right? Like they, you know, employees and everybody in that organization, they couldn't imagine not you not being part of that business. So, um, yeah, I, I just believe that you're 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 exactly right. I mean, that's absolutely um, that's vital. I think you get to a point a point in time, Jason, where you're just a part of the furniture. The, the operation wouldn't go on without you. You're, you're a staple right. in the business. And something you just said right there, which I think is is so, you know, if you were to go down and, and evaluate our full uh, network of consultants we currently have, and, and even everybody that we talk to that's not part of it, I think a lot of them, many, many of them are our consultants because they didn't want to have to go to the same business every day and do their financial reports every day and only work on one specific thing. I know for a fact, you know, I love, you know, I love operation procedures. I love finding inefficiencies in production and um, I love working with sales and I love working with marketing. I love, so I know so many people that, you know, maybe were past business owners of themselves, uh, themselves they, they became consultants and advisors because they didn't want to be only doing the same task every single day. I don't want to just do someone's social media every day. Man, I love creating some, some video posts and some, you know, really doing some different things, but I'm going to put that camera down. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to try and help their production and figure out why there's, you know, inefficiencies over here. So, so many in our, in our landscape and in our, in our group, I know, are, are very diverse in what they want to work on. They don't want to be uh, a line worker and go to work and pack the same box every day, all day, all day long. So, you know, we're, we're saying that exact same thing with don't pigeonhole yourself down into one category. That's why, I mean, that's because we've, we've more than likely, most of us have already been there and done that um, where we had a job and now we're, we don't want that. Right. So don't, stick yourself into one category for the rest of your life and, or the rest of your consulting life. Um, and, and really it helps you, you know, you grow too, you know, you get to, you know, maybe you're not, you know, really well versed in manufacturing and, or well versed in, um, uh, supply chain or whatever it may be. And, you know, give, it gives you the opportunity to really grow, you know, in those categories as well. I think that's a very important uh, part of this is that you can grow as a consultant 
uh, through the journey. You don't have to walk in knowing everything about whatever type of business it is. You just walk in there with your consulting hat on uh, and your magnifying glass ready to look for all of those issues. And then, you know, if you join something like Consultex or there's another, a number of other networks out there, then uh, you can rely on the knowledge and resources that they provide uh, to be able to, you know, educate yourself further and, and, and learn what you need to know and do the research. That's a very important part of consulting is your research researching what you're trying to improve as you're going. I, I say it all the time. Our resources library, um, very well, very well named by David, but it, it's, um, it, it's unbelievably valuable um, and how much we are that continuing education for consultants and, and people starting in this field or, or really expanding from, you know, maybe they were an HR consultant and now they want to just be a consult X overall um, total business consultant. So um, our resources library does that better than I mean I think it doesn't get enough credit for what it what's in there, um, but we are truly uh, an academy and always educating you guys to be better and and well versed in all different all the areas of business. Exactly, Jason. Now before we wrap up, I just want to mention that. It's really important not only to know the services that you can offer as a consultant, but also to be able to provide some indication of the return on investment that the business owner you're working with or the company are going to receive because that's it's an incredibly crucial part of the sales process. It's very hard to sell an intangible thing like I'm going to make your culture of your business better and everything's going to be smiles and waves. That's, uh, that's a very difficult thing for a business owner to invest money in. But if you can produce a report uh, or come up with some figures around that, that becomes so much easier to sell. So our next podcast, Podcast 88, which will be released in about a week's time, that is going to dive deeper into that conversation. Yeah, and, if, and on that line there, Julius, 80% of business consultants and advisors spend most of their time in business development and prospecting and the biggest growth blocker that is, um, I, I, I always follow the, uh, the consultant industry report by Predictive Index. They have repeatedly been told the biggest growth blocker for consultants is proving the ROI to clients. So I can't wait to dive into that with you. I think it's going to be, um, it's, it's just the, the holy grail of, of how you build your agency, how you grow your client list, and, um, and how to work with those guys long term. Let's dive into that next time. But just to summarize and wrap up this discussion, Jason, our recommendations are that coaches and consultants and advisors stay broad and have that conversation where they're trying to actually find out what the challenges are going on in the business and the underlying issues that are indeed causing those challenges. Do you have any last words to add? No, I think, uh, I think we covered it. I think um, there's no reason to repeat what I feel like I've said six times on this, but you know, stay broad, um, and then once you identify the problem, then that's time. That's the time to narrow down and really be specific and and pinpoint on on the specific tasks. Awesome! Thanks for your time, Jason. I'll see you on the next one. Yeah, man, for sure.